No wonder Mr. Johnson left so hurriedly. How so, sir? Well, after spinning such a ludicrous yarn as Heart of Skegless, I don't think I'd wait to have my story further scrutinised. Oh, well, Mr. Right. Green, if the veracity of our stories perturbs you, you will wish to go home now. Yeah. <laughs> before we discommode you further. No, yes. no, no. It's no hardship for me to remain here until the Mausoleum Club admits me as a member. Mr. Oh, Green, is by no means dear. certain that we tell us... You, you see, when I tell a story, I I draw on the perennial source of true life tales in my father. Oh. Did I tell you he was a high court oh. judge? Yes, yes you did. Oh, yes. But Mr. Yes. Green, might I suggest that it is one thing to view the sewer of humanities that flows past your window, but quite another to sink your arms in it up to the elbows and unblock its sluices with your bare hands. Yes. Yeah. Well, where did this jack-in-the-box spring from? Ah, and wearing a Kingston collar in a gentleman's club. Oh, the Marcellam Club plays no heat to class, sir. Oh, so I see. <laughs> and, and what kind of villain are you, sir, that, that has such an intimate knowledge of human waste? <laughs> villain? Mm. Have you not heard of Chalker of the Yard? Chalker? Of the yard? <laughs> yeah, well, 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 yeah, well I, do, I do believe my father, uh, Lord Justice Green. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, I, I think he has mentioned that name. So, Mr. Chalker, let's hear your party piece. Gentlemen. Very well. Yes, yes. One more won't do any harm. Yes, plenty. <laughs> Tales from the Mausoleum Club, written by Ian Brown and James Hendry, starring Fulton Mackay, Francis Matthews, Roy Hudd, Hugh Paddock, John Glover, Royce Mills, Peter Howell and Karen Asko. Episode 3, A Study in Starlets. The shocking events I'm about to relate occurred in the autumn of 1890... 1890 when I was a police officer of middle rank, middle age, and middling talents. Picture, if you will, that area of London renowned for its theatres and music halls, known as St. Dash's, and particular that thoroughfare you all know, which I'd best refer to as Shaftesbury Dash. I know it. Shut up. I do know it. It is, gentlemen, it is Tuesday evening. And the streets are thronging with ladies and gentlemen dressed up to the hilt. The gas lights are twinkling through the fog like a string of stolen pearls. Everywhere there is gaiety, excitement and anticipation. Everywhere, that is. Except in Mr Lionel Lobo's Melodium Theatre, where the turns he presents are famed for their consistent quality. They are all rubbish. And now! My lords, oh. ladies, and uh, gentlemen. What about us? <laughs> oh, girls, no, 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 don't, don't start, please. <laughs> we present a leading light of ligneous. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, 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 talks a lot. Um, um, loquacity! Yes, oh. loquacity. Oh. An artificial oh. artiste of articulate art. RG Bart! No, no, no. No, 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 it's the tip of my tongue. Oh. No, no. Armadillo! Uh, uh, <laughs> never mind. We present a paragon of plywood. P, P, P. P. No, you should have gone P. before you came out. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, uh, for your delight, delectation, and uh, uh, something else beginning with a D. <laughs> William Wood and his little wooden willy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <coughs> Come up here. Ah. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hello, my little man. Hello, Mr. Good. Oh. Which one's the dummy? Oh. Oh. Now, Willie, I, I, I believe you've got a, a riddle for me. Oh, That's right, Mr. Good. When is a goer not a goer? Oh. 
<laughs> I don't know when it comes here. When is a door not a door? When it's a... <laughs> uh, I, I, I. Oh, no! This is Carrigal! Carrigal! Mr. Wood! He's been scabbed! Scabbed? Yes! He's dead! He's been scabbed to death! Hang, hang on. If he's dead... Uh-oh, glowing eh? I acted with the legendary alacrity of the Metropolitan Police, and within hours, my constable and I were on the scene. A good crowd had gathered. In fact, it was the best crowd the Melodium had had for years. Make way, make way there, we are police officers. Oh, thank goodness you're here, sir. I dare not call you sergeant in front of all these oaklers. Come round the back way. I mean, imagine what will become of my business if this gets into the papers. Never mind that, sir. A man has been killed. Yes, 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 of course. I want to interview all your staff at once and everyone who appeared on the bill tonight. Yes, yes. Please, walk this way. If I could walk that Uh, way, I wouldn't be... Sorry, sir, that on a musical summer. The instrument of Mr Wood's demise was not a mystery. Right at the back of the stage, we were shown a large contraption whose central feature was a giant crossbow. This served as the finale to a knife-throwing display by the amazing Slasher. Well, governors, I confess. Oh, you confess, eh? I confess it's my machine, but I am not the man what committed this horrible felony. Yeah, but look at this, sir. Eh? The machine has a clockwork priming mechanism. Just by turning it here, you can make it go off any time you like. Oh, dear. Look at that. Good gracious... You've injured one of Mr. Presto's performing poodles. Yes, 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 but not seriously by the look of it. Yeah, but he won't be performing again. So, if the firing of the device can be preordained, then once again, all fingers point to you, Mr. Slasher. Fingers? That was eight years ago, and it was an accident. She moved her hand. Come on, sir, he must have been him. He's a proper villain. Perhaps. Perhaps, but if Mr. Slasher could preset this weapon, so could anybody else who had access behind the scenes. Yeah, that's true, sir. Everyone, everyone is a suspect. We need to find a motive. Yes. Who would want to kill two such harmless and lovable troopers as William Wood and his little wooden willy? Just about everyone you sold a ticket to. You've seen his act, sir. That'll do, Sergeant. Please. On with the interviews. I questioned all manner of music hall terms. Bearded ladies, snake charmers, cross-dressers, the pyrotechnic papageno, he fills the stage with blazing budgerigars, dwarf tumblers, trapeze artists, goat swallowers. Next! Ah. <laughs> My name is Crawford Spencer. I am an actor of the highest repute who has appeared before 11 crowned heads of Europe. Mr. Spencer, time presses. Of course, of course. <clears throat> Pardon me. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace. Thank you. From... Oh. But do you have anything relevant to the murder? Ah, to the murder. No! Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle towards my hand? Come, let me trust. Next! I, I, I have some more pieces. Next! Uh, does this mean I... will let you know. Oh. All right. Next. <clears throat> Bless this house, O oh Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. Bless these walls so firm and stout. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Next. Two days later. Back at the yard, waiting in the inspector's office, Constable Bull and I rehearsed the salient facts. So, Constable, the facts. There aren't any. On the contrary, the facts are twofold. Number one, this is an apparently motiveless murder. Number two... We don't know who did it. Oh, Constable. 
Ah, Inspector. No, Chalker. How are we progressing with the Melodium murder? Well, sir, we've managed to amass two facts. Thank you, Paul. Yes, just as I had surmised. Well, it is not good enough. The papers are talking of little else but this case, and there's the Parliamentary Review of Scotland Yard next month. Ah, The public wants results, and results are what we are going to have. Well, sir, if you have a notion as to how to expedite this investigation, we'd be very pleased to hear it. Good. Because I have decided that where the professionals can make no progress, we must seek the assistance of the amateurs. Oh, no. Therefore, I authorise you to procure the services of that celebrated consulting detective, Mr. Melcroft Dupont. (sighs) Not again. Not again. It was with heavy heart and constable bull that I made my way to a flat off Regent's Dash home of that celebrated interfering amateur, Melcroft Dupont. You are all no doubt cognizant of this fellow's reputation, having read of his miraculous deductive skills in the Dash magazine, the man who successfully concluded such notorious cases as the sign of V, the minor scuffles in the Rue Morgue, the prune stone, and the woman in white with a hint of apricot. I would not begrudge him his glory, were it not for the fact that most of the groundwork in these cases was carried out by a hard-pressed police force in the unpublicised person of myself. (coughs) Yes? I'm sorry, madam, I must have come to the wrong house. No, it's all right. I'm Mrs. Dupont's new housekeeper. Ah, then would you kindly tell them that... Sergeant Chalker... And Constable Bullery to see you. Hmm? What? <laughs> How did you know our names? <laughs> Mr. Dupont's been expecting you, sirs. You'll find him in the parlour. <laughs> Try not to look so surprised, Constable. <laughs> if there's one thing we mustn't do, it's show Dupont he's put one over on us. <laughs> here we are, gents, and no mistake. What? But there's no one here. I thought you said, madam, that we'd find him in the parlour. <laughs> And so you have, gents. If you just give me time to... (gasps) Unveil myself. Gaw! Close your mouth, Constable. (laughs) Yes. We don't want to show Dupont he's put one over on us. (laughs) Yes, Sarge. Does he always wear a frock? Only when he fancies himself as a master of disguise. Well, it certainly foxed you, Chalker. (laughs) Well, cigars, gentlemen. Oh, yes, No, thank you. Well, you won't mind if I have one. No, but I do wish you wouldn't bite the end off. But Chalk, you know very well I haven't used a cigar clipper since the case of the stolen cigar clipper. Now look here, Dupont. Unfortunately, I have been sent here to seek your assistance. Ah, but I hardly think I can assist you in the way you most desire. What do you mean? I noticed you failed to satisfy your wife last night. What? (laughs) You are sporting yesterday's collar, sir. Oh, yes. And a man as fastidious in his habits as yourself would ensure that his wife laid out a fresh one every morning. Obviously, you upset her in a particular way. Hmm? (laughs) That's enough from you, (laughs) Bull. No, I, uh... Um, I'd left the house very early today. Couldn't stand another minute sleeping on the sofa. What? How did you know that... that... strand of horsehair in your whiskers. <laughs> but we haven't time for this nonsense. Time is of the... Uh, yes, yes, the, uh... fine. But I must go into the other room and just slip out of my dress. Rum fellow, I, sir. What? Oh, yes, yes. Let's just hope he doesn't bring out his banjo. Hey? We'll see who that is, Bull. Ah, well, hello there. Top of the morning to you, Thorf. Pick up. It's a Mr. Dupont I want to be seeing, to be sure. I'm afraid he's in the other room at the moment. Ah, but I have a package for him, be Jesus. Well, Mr. Dupont is in my employ at the moment. I will receive the package on his behalf. But sure, he gave me strict instructions to deliver it into his own hands. And not to any flat-footed Bow Street runners I might find lurking about the house at all at all. Oh, when I get hold of him, I'll... I'll... You'll... What, sir? <gasps> <laughs> yes, it's me all along. <laughs> Uncanny, isn't it? Yeah, I'll say. Now, to solve the Melodium murder... No, don't interrupt, Inspector. After a week without results, I know that's what you've come to see me about. Well, the facts... The facts are twofold. 
One, there is no motive. Two, there is no suspect. But we already... Uh, hush! Let me think. Let me see. see now. Hmm. Hmm. Aha! And I can now furnish you with a third fact. Yes? yes. There is no... Yes? yes. Victim! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yes, or rather, no predetermined victim. What are you playing at? The banjo. But as for the melodium, I took the trouble to make some elementary inquiries there, as I was sure you would not. But... Uh... And it seems they have a rather singular method for fixing the order of the evening's entertainment. Since each turn is as bad as the others, its position on the bill is selected by lot. So, the presence of Mr William Wood on stage, the precise moment that the device was triggered, was the work of blind chance. Could have been any of them. He's right, you know, sir. Yes. Yes, yes. I know, I know. He's always bloody right. <laughs> Pass the cigars, would you? <laughs> no hands. So easy. <laughs> Goodbye, Dupont. Thinking. Yes, Paul. If we got no suspects, no motive, and no proper victim, yes, it seems we got no murder. Eh? Look, it could have just been an accident, like Slasher said. Slips happen all the time in the theatre. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. Let's have an early night. Come on. I don't know how this could have occurred. I never use a real saw. Oh, my poor Flossy. Yes, I'm sorry, sir, but we must still include you in our inquiries. Inspector, can't you see the poor devil is beside himself? Yeah, and so is Flossy by the looks of it. Oh, Constable. No. Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. Dear, oh, gracious me. Someone must have got in and swapped my trick saw for a real one. Oh. Mr. Robo, Mr. Robo, there's a queer-looking toff leaving by the stage door. A proper wrong and he looks and all. That's our man. Come on, Bull, after him. <laughs> Did you see him, Sarge? No. Damn this piece, super. Wait. Huh? There he is. Quick, grab him. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Got you, you blackguard. Ah! Let me go. Let me go. I am a German citizen. Achtung. Chancellor Bismarck will hear of this. German, eh? Well, what business have you creeping round our theatres dressed up like Jack the Ripper? Ah, yeah, that was not me. Let me go. It yeah. seems that we have our man, Bull. Oh, sir. The handcuffs, if you please. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Right. I oh. wish Dupont was here so I could see the expression on his fizzog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> well, if you so wish, Sergeant, then your wish shall be my pleasure. <laughs> oh. Good evening, gentlemen. Did you enjoy your run? Oh, no. <laughs> have a cigar. Dupont, you blithering jackanapes. What's the meaning of this tomfoolery? It was necessary to lure you away from the theatre. Lure us away? Why? Well, we could hardly discuss the case in front of our prime suspect. Suspect? But we haven't got one. <laughs> There's no pattern at all. On the contrary, dear sergeant. Oh, no. Here we go. There is, in fact, a most distinct pattern that leads us directly to the murderer. And who... I'm sure you'll work it out eventually. Eventually? But there's no time to waste. 
Wrong again, Sergeant. We have precisely seven days, during which time I intend to turn my talents for ensnarement from criminals to salmon in the braes of Caledonia. But, but... Have no fear. Until next Tuesday. Sergeant, Constable. <laughs> Could you take these handcuffs off, please? The next seven days were downright hell. By day, I sweated and puzzled like a cracksman with an unfamiliar lock. By night, I tossed and turned on our parlour's horsehair sofa. What was the meaning of Dupont's latest taunts? And how much longer would the inspector delay my demotion? The next Tuesday evening found me in the wings of the Malodium Theatre. Well met, Mr Dupont. Hmm. Enjoy your fishing, did you? No, indeed. And by your presence here... I take it you've discerned the pattern in the Melodium murders, hmm? Certainly I have. No, it's no surprise, really. Even the vulgar populace have worked it out. And they're here in large numbers for the regular Tuesday tragedy. Then hadn't we better arrest our man at once? Without evidence? No, no, no. No, we must wait and catch him Manu Rubato. Manny who? Red-handed, my flat-footed friend. <laughs> Red-handed, my eye. He always rigs it so as he's never there when it happens. Don't worry your plodding constabular brain about it. Just be ready with the handcuffs when I give the word. Who pumped you, insufferable <laughs> interfering... <laughs> Yes, it's me again. Yes, Lionel Hugo. <laughs> your humble host. Well done, well done. And now, for your excitement, exhilaration, and inextinguishable ecstasy, we present the emperor of extrication, the nabob of non confinement, the uttermost in unentanglement. What? An escapologist, your highness. Oh, Here he is, the daredevil of Dagenham, dangerous Dag. Thank you, thank you, and hello. Thank you. As you can see, I am suspended by my ankles over a large vat of boiling acid of nitrates. My assistant, Valerie, is now tying my wrists with two venomous cobras. And my head here will be encased in this water-filled helmet here which is also lined with 23 of Europe's sharpest razor blades. Oh. Aha. I shall be lowered into the vat and shall thereupon endeavour to escape. Thank you. Valeria, uh, the uh, helmet. If the murderer makes his move, it will be now. Come here and watch this chalker. We might learn something. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. Dufont. I, uh, I stumbled. You blunderer. I've dropped my cigar. I'll get it. Thank you, thank you. And now I'm going home for a jolly good uh, bath. <laughs> <laughs> Completely unscathed. Now, I realise that some of you were drawn here tonight by a certain morbid fascination. Oh, no. Uh, no, no, no fancying no, no. that the two unfortunate fatalities occurring here are part of some wicked design. Oh. I assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. But who knows when the bloody hand of fate will next raise its gory fingers? Oh. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Look, it's, it's oh. Melcroft Dupont, the oh. celebrated detective. Murder! It was. Oh. 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 He's dead! Oh. Oh. But I, I don't understand. <laughs> Men, seize that master of ceremonies. Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right, there we are, sir. And look what we've found on him. Aha. Five gelatin capsules of cyanide of potash. Mm -hmm. And the sixth here between the victim's teeth. So Dupont's fate was assured by his notorious lack of a cigar clipper. 
It's the drop for you, Mr. Obo. But I didn't do it. Aha! Uh -huh. Can you also deny the murders of William Wood and the lovely Flossie? No, no. I confess, uh -huh. those two deaths are talked against my name. It was a cruel but effective means of improving my houses. With the name of Melodian screaming from every new stand, the public flocked to my theatre like vicarious vultures. Better the two should perish than my beloved Melodium Theatre. Yes, those two were mine, but I swear I did not kill Meltrop Dupont. Tell that to a court of your peers. Constable, take him away. On, but this you. is Come a on. tragic travesty of tribunal turpitude, oh. a megalithic miscarriage of premature imprisonment, oh. a calamitous cock-up. Oh. And, of course, you know the rest. Ober was convicted of three murders. I was promoted to superintendent after the parliamentary review. And now I enjoy a reputation as the most celebrated detective in the metropolis. Wait, sir. Look, what opportunity did the murderer have to tamper with Dupont's cigars? Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, he'd only just returned from Scotland. Oh, it was a simple matter of passing him a prepared cigar while his attention was elsewhere. <laughs> you see, when Dupont arrived at the theatre, Obo was front of house, where he remained until his arrest. Mm. He never got near enough to affect the switch, unless... He, uh, yeah. Oh, and, and <laughs> <laughs> now, don't worry your honourable brain about it, Mr. Green. Have a cigar, will you? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no. No, 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 I'd rather not. Actually. I didn't believe in smoking. I think it's... <laughs> Tales from the Mausoleum Club, episode three, A Study in Starlets, was written by Ian Brown and James Hendry and starred Fulton Mackay, Francis Matthews, Roy Hudd, Hugh Paddock, John Glover, Royce Mills, Peter Howell and Karen Asko. Music was by Max Harris. The producer was Paul Spencer. And there's another star-studded lineup at the same time next week where Martin Jarvis, Miranda Richardson and Brenda Blethyn all pop up in a tale of Miss Primrose. Now, you may have recently seen BBC TV's very stylish adaptation of Agatha Christie's The Pale Horse. Well, here on 4 Extra, we're offering you a chance to hear a production, no less stylish, of course, from 1993. It's the story of an investigation into a series of strange deaths linked to two women who practice a dark art. I don't like that woman. I don't like her at all. Bella? Oh, I'm sure she's quite harmless, really. No, 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 I don't mean her. I mean Sybil. She seems just silly. All that stuff about voodoo and all those reincarnations she was going on about. Why is it that anyone who was a kitchen maid or an ugly old peasant never seems to get reincarnated? All was Egyptian princesses. Stephanie Cole, Jeremy Clyde and Terence Alexander star in Agatha Christie's The Pale Horse, here on 4 Extra this Saturday afternoon at 4. Your weekend dose of sci-fi, fantasy and horror features the extraordinary talent that was Vincent Price with a creepy tale of a seemingly unremarkable fellow. Arthur is your ordinary, very ordinary, ordinary man. The kind of man one simply passes in the street. Only a few very intimates are even aware of his existence and yet in his home life, even this ordinary, very ordinary, ordinary man has his hidden depths. Depths too deep to fathom. And that's just how we like him here in the seventh dimension, the price of fear. Plus, the hitchhiker's guide to